uh, I welcome you all with my new lecture on order, uh, which is a very important topic uh, in regard to OSCE. So, as we get many stations, uh, uh, since many years we are getting uh, getting a station on audit. So, there are different topics on which audit can be done. Uh, depends upon what type of stations comes in examination. Uh, but I have uh, given an example of uh, audit of a cesarean section, which was done in our, our war. So we will be discussing audit accordingly, according to that. So first of all, what is a clinical audit? Clinical audit is a quality improvement process that seeks to improve patient care and outcomes through systemic systematic review of care and implementation of change why there is a need to do audit because whatever practice you are doing in your wards your hospitals you need to just keep a check and balance on that you need to uh, see what complications have occurred why number of certain things have increased and then you have to match it according to the national standards and accordingly you have to implement the change this is called audit cycle in audit cycle, the first step is identify the problem or issue. What is the problem or what is the issue? What On whatever topic we are doing the audit, first of all, we have to identify the problem. Like if you want to do audit on induction of labor, if you want to do audit on tole, trial of labor of the cesarean section, we want to do audit on shoulder dystocia or any other thing. We want to do audit on uh, number of uh, MVs done in, in the ward. Uh, number of uh, DNC is done in a ward. So audit can be done on any topic but first of all we have to identify the problem or, or issue on which we want to do the audit. The second one is you have to set certain criteria and standards and these criteria and standards should be set according to the national standards that are following internationally, that are being followed internationally. Like what uh, standards are being followed according to the RCOG guidelines, what standards are being followed according to the WHO guidelines. So your standards should be according to their standards. Then set the criteria and standards. Third one is observe practice or data collection. Then you have to collect data, whatever things are being followed in your world. Uh, in ward mein, how many numbers of cesarean section are there in a year or how many number of uh, induction of labors you have given in a year how many number of uh, uh, instrumental deliveries have been performed in a year so you have to collect data then you have to compare performance with criteria and standards those standards which have been set on step number two then you have to compare your data with those standards and then implement the change whatever flaws you find in your data you have to implement the change accordingly you have to implement the change according to the national standards so this is known as audit cycle it has five points okay so what are the prerequisites of audit first of all you have to make a proper audit design then make an audit team take ethical approval you have to take uh, approval from the hospital uh, from the patients uh, on which you have to perform the audit and then set time period of audit and re-audit to assess improvement. Set a particular time period. This is very important. Like you want to perform audit of six months. You want to perform audit of one year. Whatever time period audit you need to do, set a time period of it. Funding of audit. Who will do this funding? Whatever funds you need, you have to make it uh, clear that who will be doing the funding of audit, whether your hospital is doing it, whether any NGO is doing uh, uh, funding of that particular topics audit. So you have to mention that as well. Then involve all stakeholders, whoever will be involved in the particular uh, audit cycle, you have to involve all those persons. That could be a senior obstetrician, a senior gynecologist, postgraduates, medical officers, nurses. All of these people will be involved in implementing the change, setting the standards and the criteria and the data collection. Then you have to identify the problem or issue, which we discussed. So this audit was done in our unit. <laughs> there is high rate of cesarean section in gynae unit 2 in one year time period from March 2021 till March 2022. Now we have to do audit for high rate of cesarean section in one year time period. Okay, then second step is set criteria and standards. 
so these criteria uh, were set in our ward that what criteria and standards we have to follow in our ward so we were comparing the rate of uh, the number of cesarean sections performed in a year and uh, uh, then we compare it with our set criteria and standards so these were the standards and these what this was the criteria normal vagina delivery rate should be 70% of total number of deliveries acha ye criteria jo humne banaya tha this was according to the national international criteria follow jo ke uh, uh, royal college follow karta hai to who guidelines ke accordingly hai ke normal delivery rate should be 70% of total number of deliveries all isme se koi aisa criteria nahi hai jo humne khud se banaya ho so we are following international criteria and standards so whenever you get this station in exams you have to perform audit like this you will uh, be asked to uh, whether do audit of shoulder dystocia in your ward so you also have to mention the set criteria and standards like what standards you will be following so then trial of instrumental vaginal delivery can be given in absence of contraindications at full cervical dilatation offer external cephalic version for breech presentation if no contraindications tolic trial in women with previous one lcs do not use pelvimetry for decision making about mode of birth consultative obstetrician should be involved in decision making for cesarean birth okay so this is how we collected the data uh, this was our data the total number of uh, lcs and nvds are showing in this uh, uh, graph so there were 120 nvds um, in one year per annum and the number of cesarean sections are shown in blue that is 269 uh during examination when you will uh, tell this stat then you will simply uh, tell the examiner that we will do the data collection regarding the number of cesarean sections uh, compared to the normal vaginal deliveries in our ward or unit or if uh, you have given the case of shoulder dystocia then the number of cases of shoulder dystocia that have occurred or the number of instrumental vaginal deliveries so whatever uh, would be your topic you have to fit the same things into the same criteria the data is shown in uh, this manner uh, there are the cesarean section indications out of which the most of cesarean sections were done due to previous cesarean section the number is uh, around 103 and other indications are like uh, second most common is fetal distress then placenta previa morbid adherent placenta and the rest of the indications are here again the data is shown in other graphical uh, method in this you can also see that the maximum number of cesarean sections were due to previous cesarean section then fetal distress placenta previa morbid adherent placenta placenta abruption and so on These are the causes now uh, comes the third point that is compare the performance with criteria uh, this is the fourth point compare performance with criteria and standards now you have to compare what standards you set before according to the international criteria and what was the performance of your ward uh, you can uh, then differentiate the things like what could be done and what is done what should not be done you can comment on all these things like if you are explaining uh, suppose shoulder dystocia so for that uh, uh, suppose the reason could be most of the women were given uh, induction of labor without uh, any need or uh, the estimated calculation of the fetal weight was not accurate or the uh, most of the women were diabetic and obese for whom elective cesarean section were not done so any reasons could be there so there are modifiable factors and non modifiable modifiable factors modifiable factors are the ones which you can modify in your practice uh, in uh, future modifiable factors could be cesarean sections due to previous lcs the number was 103 out of which 38 were previous one so in previous one we can go for tolic trial of labor after cesarean section uh, which was not done in our case trial of instrumental vaginal deliveries was given only 5 times it means the expertise were not enough to give a more trial of instrumental vaginal deliveries induction of labor at 38 and 39 weeks of gestation was given at uh, and it was done six times means it was early induction so whenever you go for early inductions most of the times it uh, lands on failure no trial of external cephalic version in breech again because of expertise because every time cesarean is not available on floor no trial of vaginal delivery if patient has mild bleeding in placental abruption uh, uh, which is 
uh, thing that you can wait for normal vaginal delivery if there is a, a, a sign of delivery or chance that female can deliver normally in case of mild bleeding and if, if she is vitally stable so it was not done LSCs due to fetal distress were 39, confirmed by single CTG. Most of the times it happens in wards that if a single CTG showing deceleration, reduced variability and no acceleration it comes, so there is a panic to perform emergency cesarean section. Most of the times we do not go for repeat CTGs. So on single CTG 15 times LSCs were done. So this was uh, the number of fetal distress cesarean sections 39. Maternal wish cesarean section 4. So this is kind of modifiable factor by proper counseling. Okay, so these are the non-modifiable factors. Non-modifiable factors are placenta previa and morbid adrenal placenta, IUGR, major placental abruption, scar dehiscence, severe preeclampsia and eclampsia, bad obstetrical history, obstructed labor, LSCS due to previous VVF repair. These all are the non-modifiable factors for these reasons cesarean section had to be performed. Now implementing change, consider careful tolic in previous one cesarean section. Postgraduate training of instrumental vaginal delivery is very necessary. Avoid second stage cesarean section by giving prior of instrumental deliveries. Uh, again, expertise are needed for this and training. Induction of labor at completed 40 weeks of gestation if no contraindication. Postgraduates and consultants training of external cephalic version by senior obstetrician. So these are the changes which can be implemented in the ward. This is the fourth decision to perform cesarean section for fetal distress should be taken by consultant obstetrician, not by the junior doctors. Avoid doing pelvic examination till 39 to 40 weeks to prevent cesarean section due to CPD with very common practice uh, uh, nowadays that uh, <clears throat> the females, out, uh, females outlet or patients outlet does not seem adequate uh, for normal vaginal deliveries if uh, pelvic examination is done on 39 to 40 weeks especially in primary gravidas because the ligaments are not that much relaxed so you uh, should not go for uh, cesarean section until unless she completes her 40 weeks and there are no signs of labor and there are multiple other things so this should be avoided undue pelvic examinations make a strategies to avoid cesarean section due to maternal wish implement maintenance of labor care guide for every delivering woman so this is very important nowadays uh, previously partogram used to be maintained but now labor care guide uh, has come and it is a very good kind of uh, precise uh, uh, paper on which you can look for the progress of woman and uh, fetal assessment reorder dr bane to assess your performance thank you so much uh, so audit can be done according to the same method on different topics uh, which uh, we can also discuss in uh, uh, other slide other lectures so any other topic you want to uh, do audit on so you can uh, message in the chat and I can look up to make another presentation on audit as well thank you so much